guys to lead again you know, a black history month so with that being said let's have another story apologies guys i need to fix up myself there paul paul c i cannot say his name i'm not going to embarrass myself especially with this sort of important topic he's former chelsea forward um his life was interesting for many reasons <clears throat> it was almost like i know it was in the 70s and 80s but it's almost like a jamie vardy story this guy was playing for hillington borough He's playing for Hillington Borough, second division, signed by Chelsea. It's the stuff made of dreams, professional footballer. He's had a long, he had a long life, a long and hard life prior to that. And he had a tr um, troubled, troubled teenage um, years. Uh, um, uh, I don't want to talk about it too tough, but the relationship between his mother, based on what I've seen, was a bit mixed. Of course, we don't know the ins and outs, but <clears throat> he had that. He was getting in a lot of trouble for petty crimes and things like that. He was from an inner city hood. And he was sent to Borstal or whatever. So, yeah, man, like, there was even rumours that he was getting in some problems there. So, we had a lot of... I think there was even something about abuse, but I don't want to... Don't quote me on that. But either way, he's had a he's had a hard life. Single parent life, a single parent um, um upbringing. Dad walked out on the family. Um, And as you can... At that time, you could see this was a time when a lot of West Indian and, uh, and African folk and people of colour were emigrating to Britain, whether they were called like they were for um, to rebuild after the war or whatever. He was a pacey, he was a pacey winger, he had a good crossing in, good technique. 79 appearances for Chelsea, 11 goals. Yeah, man, I mean, in regards to the racism he, 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 he held, I will say, this was out, out of all the stories, this is the one where it touched me the most. I mean, in his debut, we know Chelsea and West Ham are football fans all over the world at the time, well, in England, at the time, were very harsh, but a man in his debut, he's warming up, and people are, are and, and I'm, and pardon me for my language, but I'm not here to be like Sky Sports and spare you guys. Things people were saying things like this while he was warming up on his debut, I believe, um, for Chelsea. He said he was ecstatic as you would be making your debut. He's worked so hard for it, etc. He couldn't believe it, so now he's gone off the job on the sideline, and you could hear stuff like you effing gollywog, go home, sit down, black hunt. Um, I can't believe I paid my ticket to see a Negro. Um, nigger, all of these, all of these things. People used to call him all of these things. Play, um, all of these things from the crowd. His own, play, his own, um, his his actual own supporters at one point when he managed to get them somewhat on his side, they would still abuse him. They'll sing his name, but still abuse him. So in that regards, it was peak, man. It was, it was, it must have been tough. Like I said, the seventies and eighties, especially Chelsea and West Ham, all over the, the the country. But them two clubs, no holds bar, man. I remember I was reading a story about Chelsea, um, when I was looking at this, um. Doing a, doing some research, I was looking at black um black fans in the seventies and eighties when they used to go to games, and I was seeing one at Chelsea. He said his dad told some black black fans said his dad told him not to go. He went now, nah. within two minutes, people asking him for spliffs, people um um saying go home, people saying this, people saying that, national front, etc. etc. Like yeah, man, it, 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 it's madness. Like they, you know, there's you know when you see watch um and and watch some documentaries and see certain things and it really hits home, um these things it's, it's 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 ridiculous but he, he i believe at the time he was the first black player to play for chelsea <clears throat> he's come a long way because i mean chelsea fans they love i mean you still see racist incidences with chelsea fans to this day the the, the i'm not saying chelsea fans are like that these, these are a small section of idiots but the train business the well bet business yeah man and you look at how they came from now didn't want paul to play for them and now jogbar got the one them the champions league ashley Cole, I know he was a pagan with arsenal but there SEN, um, Marcel Dessay, Rude Hullet eventually became the manager. I mean, you can't, you can see he ran so these people could walk, and you can see how these things happen. I believe who was it? They had a black captain after this as well. So his struggle made it easy for them, made it slightly easier. He had a hard time. He eventually had to leave Chelsea after a bust up with his teammate, where they were one was drunk and said, Yeah, in this, and he said he smashed him in, and he dealt with him. But yeah, man, like this guy must have, he dealt with abuse. Week in, week out, on the roads, on the football pitch with his own teammates. I mean, a couple of his own teammates were riders as well, like the Scottish wing. I forgot his name. Paul something, I believe. No, no, he weren't Paul. Something I can't remember. Them old Chelsea fans. You say guys that watch me during the seventies and eighties, you know what I'm talking about in it. But yeah, like hard ass life. He's had a hard ass life. After away from the racism and stuff, he dealt with substance abuse. He's dealt with the death of his of a little of his minor child. Um, yeah, man, like. One thing that's been shown throughout his whole life, throughout all these adversities and the taking the crack and the smoking weed on weekends and things like that, 
He's a fighter. He, I think I'm pretty sure he even got cancer at one point. He fought back from cancer. He fought these racisms. He fought to claw his life back from all of that tragedy. And I can't help but praise him. Now people can say, oh, why did he take crack? Why did he do this? And even me, I, was, I might look at that a bit sceptical because I've never take crack in my life and coke and them things there. And if you if, if you watch me and you if, if you watch me and you um do them things, you need to leave now. Crow is the only thing you need. But yeah, like people look down their noses at that. And me, maybe and myself, like I said, to a degree, but we all make mistakes. We all have vices and it's how you pull back from these things. And like people, the, the reality is I'm not here to spare you guys. Like these, these are the things I've just said. You can easily see a weak individual killing themselves. He didn't. He fought and he's still there. He managed to eventually overcome all of these problems to land a coaching job. And he's got an autobiography out now that I'm actually going to buy. And recently, well, I say recently, well, a couple of years ago, Came back to Chelsea to walk around the pitch, and can you imagine that? That's a, that's so fitting. I mean, several years later, could you imagine that he walked around the pitch getting claps? Imagine he tried to do that in the seventies. It's like people from people were literally throwing bananas at this guy. It's not just him; they were a common. They, they, these were a common sight in the seventies. Like Chris Hughton said, any black footballer had to just accept it, not because they wanted to. It's just you had. To, it was a given going into and um, playing football. Not only the the racist abuse and all that nonsense. She also had commentators saying lots of dumb, retarded stuff in regards to black players and black characteristics and the makeup damn right of a black player. I rate this guy so much, man. To deal with abuse week in week out from other teams, to deal with week in week out abuse from your own, to deal with all the problems he's dealt with. I can't thank him enough. I'm not a Chelsea fan, of course, but it's these sort of stories. The stories you hear about Clyde Best, the stories about Paul, the stories about those before him, the first um, black um, professional footballer, the stories of people striving to this current day is what you want to hear because it makes it easier. It may, if he never done this, if he never done this, who know? I, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what would have happened. Of course, you'd like to think, regardless, football would have time would have moved on with immigration and things. Eventually, would have got past it. But you can never know. Who knows if there was there would actually be a black player at Chelsea? Who knows? Like, who knows? And I have a lot of black um black friends that support Chelsea and go to Chelsea games and things like that. He helped to break down the stigma because the seventies. You you. Shh. If you go and if you're black and you were going to Chelsea, I weren't there. But if you're black and going to Chelsea, you better bring something with you or grow with some serious numbers because the NF was there, the National Front. I'm just on top of not liking black people. Like I'm not here to spare you lot. Like a lot of these people are still around now. Like I can't lie, I'm still paranoid. I've been to Chelsea once. I was paro. Um, I was exa It was a bit of an exaggeration, but I was paro. Same as when I went West Ham. Paranoid, like paranoid. Like, <laughs> but yeah, man, like. I rate him, man. He's fought for his career. He fought for a career in football, coming from semi-pro, like I said. Fought um, back from substance abuse. Fought for black players. Didn't shy away. Wasn't a coward. Stood up for himself as well. He's plenty of fights and stuff because of this. But I, I, I love the guy, man. I can't. These sort of stories. It takes courage to do all of this. It takes courage. He showed courage in all aspects of his life. I can't rate him, him enough. Like being a good footballer and all them things are one thing. And I weren't there to see him, so I'm just going on what people have said. But I don't need to be um, in the 70s to realise that he was a great man regardless. He was a great man. Courage, fight, all of them things there. <sighs> Thank you very much for what you did, man. Guys, to do the you know, signing out, enough with the preaching. Yeah, get in the comments, subscribe, um, share the vids, do whatever you want with it. Give me some new content to make. I'm out, guys. Thank you very much for watching. It means the world to me. I love you guys. I'm out.